There are a few challenges rolling around the moto community right now, and as luck has it, I got tagged to do two of them. Well, number one, three reasons why I bought the bike that I did, and number two, to share three moto friends. My name is Amanda Zitto. If you're new here, I make motorcycle travel content, uh, camping, tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. I also own six bikes. I live in Portland, Oregon, and I travel in between here and my other home in Montana quite a lot, where I actually host a motorcycle campout event at the end of July called Rocky Mountain Roll. If you have never heard of that before, there should be a video popping up somewhere that tells you what Rocky Mountain Roll is, and there is also a link down in the description if you'd like to learn more about it. Moving on to the meat of this video, let's start with the three reasons challenge. I was tagged by Great Egret. Thank you, Joe. I've been having a little bit of a struggle figuring out which bike I was gonna talk about because I did do a video really similar to this a little while ago. It's called my garage video and I tell you all about all of the bikes that I own and why I have them and what their names are and that kind of stuff. Um, that is up there if you wanna go watch that. If you're curious about a bike that I'm not going to talk about today, but I figured we should talk about Briarios because Briarios doesn't get a whole lot of love, or at least he has it in the last year or so on my channel, so now I'm making up for it. <laughs> Man, it's really hard to like narrow these down into very succinct like reasons. <laughs> so reason number one that I have the Honda is because my papa wanted me to have it less specifically the bike in general, but just a different bike than Lazarus. So the, for those who don't know, Lazarus is my 1980 Suzuki GS850. I did the majority of the pilgrimage on her and she is a little bit less suited to that kind of terrain. And I had a few issues that my papa thought I could have avoided if I had had a different bike. <laughs> Reason number two that I have the CB500X and not something else is because it was cheaper than the Africa Twin. <laughs> we went to a couple different dealerships in the Missoula area. I did also try a KLR, it just didn't fit me. The first dealership that we went to in Missoula just wouldn't listen to me and what I wanted out of the bike because I was a girl, what did I know? So we left. <laughs> we went to Five Bella Yamaha and Honda um, just outside of Missoula um, to look at the Hondas. And I was super excited because they had, had an Africa Twin and I really, really wanted an Africa Twin. Just like for one, the name, and then also just like drooling over all the specs and like all of the really great reviews that had just came out about it. Keeping in mind this was 2016. The Africa Twin was like 12 grand. My papa was like, I really want you to have a better bike, but this is a little bit too much. And the very nice gentleman who runs that establishment came over and was like, well, why don't you look at the CB500X? I just bought the 2015 to make room on the floor for the 2016. Like it might be a better option for you. It's like half of the price and it's essentially the baby brother. It still has the parallel twin engine. It's still a really solid bike. Reason number three that I have the Honda is because it was incredibly stable and incredibly comfortable for me off-road. And the only reason that I knew that is because the salesperson that I was working with was so confident that I would love this bike that he let me test ride his personal bike so that I could get a handle to what it would feel like off-road. They let me test ride the bike by myself. Nobody went with me. I went up Blue Mountain Road. I got to like take some gravel roads around it and it just felt so balanced especially coming off of riding Lazarus for a month and a half on some sketchy off-road, this bike in comparison felt like a million times better. Um, but I wouldn't have gotten to know those things. I wouldn't have gotten to test ride it off-road if the salesperson that I'd been working with wasn't so confident that he let me test ride his personal bike, which still blows my mind today. It's getting kind of dark. I guess we need to move back into my garage now. <laughs> So now I'm gonna tag three people to do the three R challenge or three reasons why they bought the bike that they have. Um, number one, I'm going to pick on Tim from 40 times around. Hi Tim, I know that you're on a super long trip right now and you probably won't see this for a while, but I'm gonna pick on you anyway. I'm sure most of you know Tim already, but Tim actually used to have a cruiser before he had the BMW. And I think he mentions in his book when he got the BMW and that kind of stuff, but I'm not sure that he mentions why he specifically chose the BMW. And that would be interesting to me. So Tim, I tag you. Number two, I tag Patty Outback. He actually got a V-Strom a little while ago and I, for one, was very, very excited. Patty Outback is one of those channels that I just enjoy watching because he's funny and I just enjoy listening to him talk. Speaking of a channel that I just enjoy listening to the person talk, Chris Lonsberry. It is my turn to pay you back for tagging me in the 3x3 challenge and now I'm tagging you to do the 3R challenge. 
you made a little bit a video a little bit ago about how much you love your Dino Wide Glide, and I would love to hear three reasons why you chose that particular bike. Let's move on to the second challenge in this video, which is the three Moto Friends challenge, which I was tagged by Small Adventures. Links to all of these channels, by the way, are in the description. If you would like to go check them out, I highly encourage that you do. First on my Moto Friends list is Moto Carry, who can arguably be the most underrated Moto Vlogger in this community, because she's amazing. She's just such an incredibly lovely person, and she supports so many other channels. <laughs> not just watching and commenting other people's videos, but also she's been doing this interview series called Behind the Helmet, where she interviews other moto vloggers in the community. And I'm totally not biased because I am in that series. A lot of the time, I just feel like she's this amazing moral center of the moto community. She's really great at putting herself in other people's shoes and giving other people the benefit of the doubt when I probably wouldn't. <laughs> she is also really great at staying on topic. Just go watch her, do yourself a favor, Go watch her now. Speaking of somebody who is great at staying on topic, that one guy, he's gonna be number two on my Moto Friends list. He has been crazy prolific with the videos lately. I think he's doing this seven day video challenge right now. Um, he, it's probably near the end of it by the time this video goes up. I enjoy his content because he's always pretty positive and just like Moto Carry, he's really great at giving other people the benefit of the doubt and trying to encourage others to be nicer to each other which is always a good thing. <laughs> Number three on my Moto Friends list is For the Love of Knobs. This one I'm just straight up biased towards because I know Nathan in real life and he's just an incredible human. He has so much knowledge about off-road riding and working on motorcycles, let alone changing tires, which is a skill that I still need to learn. He is also the person who taught me how to use my GPS when I got it. So just an overall awesome guy. Nathan and his wife, Chris, and his other friend, I can't remember his name, I'm really sorry. They just got back from doing the captor and Nathan is in the middle of producing the videos from their experience and they're really well done. And I highly, highly recommend going and checking those out. I have been enjoying living the rest of the captor through their eyes. And because I cannot stop at three Moto Friends, I'm also going to recommend you go check out Solo South. He's riding a DR650 through Central and South America. Right now he's sharing his story about how he got hit by a bus in Guatemala. Uh, anyway, I've just been really enjoying his channel and I highly recommend you go check him out. And I'm also gonna recommend Flying W California. His whole goal is to share some really awesome moto camping recipes and show you how you can eat better on the road. And his quality is top notch for a beginner. I have been blown away and I just highly recommend you all go and give him some love because it, his content has been awesome. I hope that you got something out of this video. I hope that I introduced you to some new channels that you didn't know about already. Thank you to Small Adventures and Great Egret for tagging me in these challenges. And a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you so, so, so much. If you would like to support me for as little as $1 a month on Patreon, you can get early access to videos like these and my moto art. And we are now doing Patreon only live streams once a month. So if you'd like to jump on that boat, there is a link down in the description for how you can join us. Um, if that is not up your alley, that is totally okay. I sell stickers and t-shirts and all kinds of things on my Redbubble shop. If you can't do either, that is totally okay. I appreciate you just for watching these videos. And I think that's it, guys. I'll see you later. I don't have anything super funny to put the end here. I'm sorry. Um, my grandmother passed away. So if you're wondering why the video this week it hasn't been super awesome or like my other content, I just can't, don't have a lot of energy at the moment. I am heading to Montana tomorrow for the funeral. So by the time that you're seeing this, I'm already in Montana. When my paternal grandmother passed away, um, the one that half raised me growing up, um, her best friend, uh, reached out to me and she's like, can I be your grandma? And she told me all kinds of stories about my grandma and that. And, uh, and now both of them are gone and I'm kind of having a hard time with it. I still have one grandma left. Um, grandma Long, I love you if you're watching this. But it's not just life. We just have to be grateful that they were in our lives at all. There's definitely a lot of family members that I didn't get to know and I really wish that I could have. So, woo! <laughs> I'm fine, I swear.